In today's digital world, it can be a real challenge to maintain focus and avoid distractions that come with the use of technology. But what if we could find a way to harness the power of our attention to be more productive and happier? That's the topic of Attention Span, a groundbreaking book by psychologist Gloria Mark. With over 30 years of research into the effects of technology on human attention, Dr. Mark challenges conventional thinking about focus and introduces a new understanding of the balance between deep concentration and less focused states. This video summary explores Dr. Mark's findings and how they can help us perform better and live more fulfilling lives in the digital age. Before we dive into the world of attention Spain, we have a small request. Our channel is just starting out and we would love your help in reaching our goal of 1000 subscribers this month. If you enjoy our content and want to see more, please consider subscribing and sharing our videos with your friends. Thank you for your support and now, let's get back to our summary of Attention Span by Gloria Mark. Living in the digital age can be both a blessing and a curse. While it has made our lives more convenient and accessible, it has also led to a host of negative effects on our mental and emotional health. For instance, studies have shown that excessive use of technology can lead to shortened attention spans, increased stress levels, and even addiction. Therefore, it's important to recognize the impact of technology on our lives and find ways to regain control of our attention and overall well-being. In this context, the concept of agency becomes critical. Agency refers to our capacity to act independently and make choices that are in our best interest. It's about taking responsibility for our actions and being mindful of how we use our time and attention. However, in the digital world, our agency is constantly challenged by a barrage of distractions, notifications, and manipulations. We often find ourselves mindlessly scrolling through social media or responding to emails without even realizing it, which can lead to a sense of helplessness and loss of control. That's why it's essential to reclaim our agency in the digital world. We need to develop strategies and habits that allow us to use technology in a more intentional and mindful way. This can include setting boundaries on our phone and computer usage, practicing mindfulness techniques, and engaging in activities that promote deep focus and concentration. By doing so, we can not only improve our productivity, but also enhance our well-being and lead more fulfilling lives. In summary, the main argument is that we need to reclaim our agency in the digital world by understanding the impact of technology on our attention and well-being and developing strategies to regain control of our lives. By doing so, we can lead more purposeful and fulfilling lives in the digital age. The pervasiveness of digital technology in our daily lives has raised concerns about the long-term effects of our constant exposure to screens and the internet. Studies have shown that the average person spends several hours a day on their phone or other digital devices, and this amount of screen time has been linked to a range of negative outcomes, including decreased attention span, increased stress and anxiety, and a reduced ability to connect with others. Dr. Gloria Mark's research has shed light on the ways in which digital technology has impacted our behavior and cognitive abilities. Through her studies in real-world environments, she has identified the negative effects of digital multitasking, including decreased productivity and increased stress. She has also explored the concept of kinetic attention, which suggests that a balance between focused attention and less focused states can lead to improved well-being and productivity. As our reliance on digital devices and the internet continues to grow, it is important to consider the ways in which our attention spans are being affected and to explore strategies for reclaiming our agency in a digital world. Dr. Mark's work provides valuable insights into this complex issue and offers practical solutions for individuals and organizations seeking to improve their focus 
and overall well-being. It's worth noting that our reliance on digital devices has only intensified since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. With many people working remotely, attending school online, and socializing virtually, we're spending even more time in front of screens than before. This has only compounded the challenges to our attention spans and ability to focus. Furthermore, research has shown that the constant notifications and interruptions from our devices can have a negative impact on our well-being. Studies have linked excessive smartphone use to increased anxiety and depression, as well as disrupted sleep patterns. But it's not just our mental health that's at stake. Our ability to concentrate and think deeply is also affected. When we're constantly jumping from one task to another, we don't have the time or mental space to fully engage with any one thing. This can limit our creativity, problem-solving ability, and overall productivity. So what can we do to combat the negative effects of our digital habits? There are a few strategies that can help such as setting aside specific times for checking email and social media, turning off notifications for non-essential apps, and taking regular breaks from screens. Ultimately, it's about finding a balance that works for you and allows you to stay connected while also protecting your attention and well-being. Attention is a fundamental aspect of our cognitive processes. It allows us to focus on relevant information while ignoring distractions. Psychologists define attention as the ability to consciously process certain things in our environment while excluding others. It is not limited to a specific part of the brain, but rather is the result of the coordinated activity of multiple networks. These attentional networks are responsible for various cognitive processes such as sustaining awareness, prioritizing tasks, using working memory, and practicing self-regulation. Depending on the level of engagement and challenge, attention can be categorized into four types, focus, rote, bored, and frustrated. When we are highly engaged and challenged by something, we are in a state of focus. This is the state we experience when we are deeply engrossed in a project or task. On the other hand, when we are highly engaged but not at all challenged, we are in a rote state. This is when we engage in low-effort activities like watching TikTok videos or playing games. When we are not engaged and not challenged, we are in a state of boredom. And when we are not engaged but highly challenged, we are in a frustrated state. There is a common misconception that productivity is directly proportional to focus. However, each attentional state has its own purpose and value. Even rote digital activities like playing Candy Crush can be good for us because we cannot sustain focus indefinitely. Attention types fluctuate throughout the day, with most people experiencing their highest levels of focus at 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. and their highest levels of boredom shortly after lunch. The reason we cannot sustain focus forever is that it uses up a lot of our cognitive resources, which are not infinite. In order to replenish these resources, we need to take breaks. Apart from getting good sleep and taking vacations, low-effort mindless activities can provide daily mini-breaks that help us recover our energy. In fact, people tend to be happier during road activities than when they are in a focused state, which means they have an additional benefit of boosting our mood. Another myth about attention is the idea of flow, which is an elusive state of deep focus in which we become completely absorbed in a task and lose track of time. Flow is often experienced by artists when they are painting or making music. However, for knowledge workers who engage in tasks that require communication, research, and analysis, flow states may not be as common. Nonetheless, people in such jobs can still be happy, engaged, and productive by learning to work with their natural rhythms of attention. There are various tips and tricks that can help guide our attention towards greater productivity and satisfaction. For instance, we can use time management techniques such as the Pomodoro Technique, 
which involves working in 25-minute blocks followed by 5-minute breaks. We can also practice mindfulness meditation, which can help us become more aware of our thoughts and emotions and regulate our attention more effectively. Overall, understanding the different rhythms of attention can help us optimize our productivity and well-being. By embracing the different attentional states and working with our natural tendencies, we can achieve more while also feeling happier and less stressed. We can leverage different types of attention to our benefit. The great writer Maya Angelou spoke about her big mind and her little mind. Her big mind was used for deep thought when she wrote. But she would take a pause in her writing to use her little mind on simple activities, like crossword puzzles. Big mind and little mind worked together in Angelou's writing process. Big mind was used for focused, hard work, and little mind was used for replenishment so that she could return to work refreshed. A lot of great writers and scientists used road activities like gardening, or simple puzzles, to step back from the hard work of focus. Attention is more nuanced than just being focused or unfocused. When you are engaged with something and are challenged by it, then you're putting in mental effort to focus. But if you're engaged in a simple activity that is not challenging, like playing crossword puzzles or solitaire, then you're using what I call rote attention. Using rote attention makes people calm and happy. A lot of great writers and scientists used rote activities like gardening, or simple puzzles, to step back from the hard work of focus. It helped them see their work with fresh eyes. Just like we have biological rhythms, like our sleep and wake cycle, I also found in my research that there are rhythms over the course of the day for when attention is at a peak. For most people, this happens mid to late morning and mid-afternoon. Get to know your personal rhythm and peak focus time. Save your most important tasks that require hard work and creativity for those peak times. When you start feeling your attention wane, do some road activity, like Maya Angelou did to support her big mind. Distraction and multitasking can come at a high cost that we may not always consider. While we may believe we have complete control over our attention, this is not always the case. Our attention can be driven by external distractions, such as the sound of a notification or someone calling our name. These interruptions can disrupt our focus and cause frustration, pressure, and stress. Research shows that it takes an average of 25 minutes to regain focus after an interruption, which is a significant amount of time lost when you consider how frequently we can be interrupted throughout the day. What's even more surprising is that we interrupt ourselves almost as often as we are interrupted by external forces. In fact, studies have found that 44% of the time, we switch our attention without any visible trigger. We've all experienced it, we're in the middle of an important task, and suddenly we feel the urge to check our social media feeds, catch up on the latest news, or schedule an appointment. These self-interruptions can be just as damaging to our productivity as external distractions. While they may provide a brief break from the hard work, they can also cause lingering emotions, use up cognitive resources, and lead us down scrolling spirals that waste valuable time. The more we allow ourselves to be interrupted, the more difficult it becomes to focus on the task at hand. Our brains begin to crave the instant gratification and mental stimulation that come from checking our phones or switching tasks, making it harder to resist these distractions. This can lead to a vicious cycle of distraction, multitasking, and decreased productivity. Moreover, distractions can have a significant impact on our mental health. Studies have shown that excessive use of digital devices can lead to symptoms of anxiety and depression and can even change the structure of our brains over time. It's essential to be mindful of the impact of distractions on our mental and physical well-being and take steps to minimize them. In short, 
while distractions and multitasking may seem like harmless ways to take a break from the task at hand, they can have hidden costs that can impact our productivity, mental health, and overall well-being. By being aware of the effects of interruptions and taking steps to minimize them, we can improve our ability to focus, be more productive, and lead healthier lives. Our ability to deal with interruptions and multitasking is influenced by various social, environmental, and genetic factors. Research suggests that women may be slightly better at handling interrupted tasks and juggling multiple working spheres compared to men. However, the concept of multitasking is often overrated, and only a small percentage of people can multitask without compromising their mood and performance. For most of us, paying attention to two tasks simultaneously is only feasible when one of them is automatic. When both tasks require conscious effort, like having a Zoom call while writing an email, we are not truly focused on both at the same time. Instead, we are continuously switching our attention back and forth, which requires significant cognitive resources. Furthermore, Attempting to resist distractions can also consume cognitive resources, as self-control is akin to a muscle that can get exhausted if used excessively throughout the day. Interestingly, highly conscientious individuals spend more time on entertainment websites than their peers. While this may appear counterintuitive, it can actually help them recharge and take conscious breaks from their work, making it easier for them to return to the task at hand. For the rest of us, it is essential to train our self-control muscle gradually to better cope with interruptions and improve our focus. This is the reality of the attention economy, our attention is constantly being competed for by technology, social media, and the ever-increasing amount of information available to us online. It's not just a lack of discipline, that makes it hard for us to stay focused, it's the way our brains have been wired to seek out new information and stimulation. In fact, the design of the internet and social media platforms has been specifically tailored to tap into this aspect of human psychology. As a result, we often find ourselves succumbing to distractions and multitasking, even when we know we should be focusing on something else. We may start out with the best of intentions, but the constant barrage of notifications, emails, and social media updates can quickly derail our efforts to concentrate. And it's not just technology that's to blame, our culture also plays a role. We're constantly bombarded with messages that tell us we need to be doing more, achieving more, and staying connected at all times. So how do we survive in this attention economy? It's not easy, but there are a few things we can do to help ourselves stay focused. One is to set clear goals and priorities for ourselves, and to break our work down into manageable chunks. We can also try to limit our exposure to distractions by turning off notifications, setting aside specific times to check our email or social media, and working in a quiet, distraction-free environment when possible. And perhaps most importantly, we can learn to be more mindful of our own attention, noticing when it starts to wander and gently bringing it back to the task at hand. By being more intentional about how we use our attention, we can begin to take back control in the attention economy. In today's world, the attention economy has become a battleground with companies competing for our limited focus and attention. These companies use sophisticated algorithms to collect data about us and predict what kind of content will get us to click, stay on their platforms longer, and ultimately see more ads. Social media companies, in particular, use algorithms to promote emotionally charged content that elicits reactions such as happiness, surprise, fear, disgust, and even anger. Furthermore, the content we consume has become shorter and faster paced. Platforms such as TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook limit the length of content that can be uploaded, and even most online ads run for no longer than 10 seconds. 
Movers today have more frequent cuts between shots, increasing our heart rates and impulsivity and draining our cognitive resources. Considering all these factors, taking control of our attention is challenging. It requires more than just discipline and effort. We need to be aware of the powerful forces competing for our attention and take steps to protect ourselves. This may include reducing our screen time, setting boundaries on our use of social media, and being mindful of the content we consume. By being proactive and intentional about how we use our attention, we can navigate the attention economy and stay focused on what truly matters to us. There are some strategies we can use to take control of our attention and survive the attention economy. First and foremost, it is important to acknowledge that our behavior is not solely our responsibility. As mentioned earlier, companies use algorithms to exploit our attention and keep us scrolling. Recognizing this fact can help us resist the urge to constantly check our phones or engage in mindless browsing. One helpful strategy is to be intentional about setting aside time for focused work. This could involve using the Pomodoro technique, which involves working for a set amount of time, usually 25 minutes, and then taking a short break. During the work period, it is important to eliminate potential distractions, such as turning off notifications on your phone or closing unnecessary browser tabs. Another strategy is to practice mindfulness. This involves paying attention to the present moment without judgment. By practicing mindfulness, we can become more aware of when our attention is being pulled away by external distractions and bring our focus back to the task at hand. It is also important to take breaks and engage in activities that allow our minds to rest and recharge. This could involve going for a walk, practicing yoga or meditation, or simply taking a few minutes to sit quietly and breathe deeply. These breaks can help us avoid burnout and increase our productivity when we return to work. Finally, it is important to set boundaries around our use of technology. This could involve setting aside specific times of day to check email or social media, turning off notifications during certain hours, or even taking a break from technology altogether for a set period of time. While it can be challenging to resist the pull of the attention economy, by using these strategies, we can take back control of our attention and live more intentional, fulfilling lives. The narrative of pushing ourselves to our limits has been in American culture for a long time. For example, B.F. Skinner, the noted behaviorist psychologist, set his alarm clock to wake himself four times during the night so that he could work. Our digital devices were invented to extend our human capabilities. We think we're doing more, but we're paying a price. A growing body of research shows that our use of tech, and especially the pressures associated with it, is linked to stress. We want to be productive and accomplish great things, but we shouldn't do this at the expense of increasing stress to levels that affect our health. Remember, our digital age is still young, younger than the fall of the Berlin Wall. Technological innovations happen at rapid-fire speed, meanwhile, we're racing to learning how to cope with these technologies. The human mind remains a bottleneck for handling all that information. Rather than continuing to push ourselves to our limits, Let's give ourselves permission to pull back. Let's reframe how we use tech and set a goal of using it to maintain well-being. Productivity will happen along the way. We are not doomed to have short attention spans. We can change our relationship with technology and make a cultural shift. After all, we created the tech and we also have the power to shape the way we use it. Reclaiming our attention is a crucial step in taking back control of our lives in a world that is constantly vying for our attention. But with companies becoming increasingly adept at manipulating our online choices, 
it can be challenging to determine how much control we actually have over our behavior. While the philosophical debate on free will can be lengthy and complex, most psychologists subscribe to the view of soft determinism. This perspective suggests that our conditioning shapes our behavior, but doesn't entirely determine it. Therefore, reclaiming our attention requires developing a greater sense of digital agency, which means taking charge of our behavior in the digital world. Developing a meta-awareness of our digital behavior is the first step in cultivating our digital agency. We need to recognize our habits, understand what forces are trying to manipulate our attention, and learn which distractions we are most susceptible to. By asking ourselves the right questions, we can develop this awareness. Before we open Instagram, we should ask ourselves, what will I gain from this? When we are already scrolling through Instagram, we should ask ourselves, how much time have I spent here? And what am I gaining from this experience? Additionally, we can visualize the end of our day and consider how we would feel after spending hours in a YouTube rabbit hole. By taking the time to reflect and ask these questions, we can begin to develop a greater sense of awareness and control over our digital behavior. In order to reclaim our attention and develop more digital agency, it is important to understand the ways in which our behavior is shaped by technology and culture. Companies use algorithms to collect data about our personalities and behaviors, predicting what kind of links will get us to click and promoting content that elicits emotional reactions. As a result, we often find ourselves mindlessly scrolling and clicking, not even conscious of our choices. To combat this, psychologists suggest developing a meta-awareness of our digital behavior. This means recognizing our habits, understanding the forces that are trying to manipulate our attention, and learning which distractions we are worst at resisting. By getting into the habit of asking ourselves the right questions, such as what will I gain from this, before using social media, we can begin to take control of our attention. It is also important to get in tune with our natural rhythms of attention. Most people focus best around 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. and have a dip in attention after 1 p.m. By scheduling our hardest tasks during these times of peak focus, we can optimize our productivity. And when our attention is low, we should schedule deliberate breaks of road activity, such as scrolling through social media or taking a walk. By shifting our attention during natural pauses in our workflow, we can prevent burnout and maintain focus. To make these changes stick, we should treat self-regulation as a muscle that requires regular exercise. The more often we remember to ask ourselves the right questions and structure our day for optimal productivity, the easier it will become. And when we do engage in rote digital activities like playing games or scrolling through social media, we should plant a hook that will pull us back to work such as scheduling the activity 10 minutes before a work call. Ultimately, developing a healthy relationship with technology requires change on the individual, organizational, and societal level. Companies can designate email-free hours and create policies that prioritize employee well-being over productivity. Governments can support programs for media literacy education in schools and provide resources for mental health and well-being. By working together, we can create a digital world that is shaped by us, not just by technology. Digital technologies have changed the way we pay attention, with shorter attention spans and increased multitasking affecting our well-being and productivity. Online companies use algorithms to engage and manipulate us, making it difficult to control our attention. To regain control, we need to understand these forces and develop a meta-awareness of our digital behavior. By asking the right questions and tuning into our natural rhythms of attention, we can structure our day to complete difficult tasks during peak focus times and take deliberate breaks during dips. Ultimately, a healthy relationship with technology requires individual, organizational, 
and societal changes. But with the right strategies, we can leverage our attention to our advantage without disconnecting completely. You just watched a video summary of Attention Span, written by Dr. Gloria Mark. To get most out of the book, please get your own copy now. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.